and welcome to Greenhouse Gardening. Right now we're in uh, Enchanted Flora Farm with Mike Gay and he will tell us about the secrets and experiences that he's had for Greenhouse Gardening. Hi Mike, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hi Bella, nice meeting you too. Uh, so, um, can you tell me more about uh, your, your greenhouses right now? How many do you have? Um, I have three that function as greenhouses, one that used to be for growing tomatoes earlier and later in the season that's basically just now for storage, kind of looks like a shipwreck, but uh, three that are functioning. That's wonderful. So what got you into greenhouse gardening? Um, cold winters. <laughs> cold winters. <laughs> basically. Um, and in Vermont, it, certain plants, if you can't start them very early, say February, March, um, they'll never be ready in time to go out into your garden. I understand. So, um, with your greenhouse as of now, very big indeed, um, how do you make sure that the snow doesn't weigh down your structure? Uh, primarily when I see that a storm is coming, I turn the furnace on, which is up and behind us to my left, and that, you don't have to set it high, I set it at around 50, and it heats the plastic, and any snowflakes that then land on the plastic melt almost instantaneously, unless it's a really heavy snowfall. And then it melts and then it slides off. Uh, on the outside, you might see at one point it was up four feet high, um, but now it's, thanks to the melt, it's down to around two and a half feet. Yeah, it's very cold outside, but the regular temperature is uh, in here 80? 80 on a sunny day. I have a uh, exhaust fan system uh, that when it hits 80 degrees, the fan turns on mm -hmm. and pulls cool air from that metal opening that's going to open up and out that way uh, through those plastic veins. And uh, it's like a little hurricane <laughs> when it does that. <laughs> sometimes it's on only for a minute, sometimes it'll stay on 10 minutes. At that point, um, I turn the fans off and I open the doors. I understand. Um, so do you make your own soil? Do you do composting or? I, I do composting personally, but the levels of soil that I need, um, I got in 12 pallets, which is 24 yards wow. of organic soil that I got from McEnroe Farm uh, down in Middleton, uh, New York. Hmm. Um, I get three different kinds. I get a regular potting mix, I get a perennial mix, and then I have a specialty blend uh, that I use for my million bells because they need acid soil. I see. So they add in a little bit of extra peat moss, which makes it more acidic. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Otherwise, what a, they what don't a cool grow technique. <laughs> so, financially, how do you support um, <laughs> your growing here? Um, some people, well, my accountant calls this a uh, more of a sometimes money losing hobby because this is such a weather dependent business. Mm -hmm. And I can grow all the beautiful plants I want if the weather in May and June is really bad, people aren't going to work in their gardens. You know, yeah. who wants to go out in the rain and work in mud? Exactly. And so we have good years and we have bad years. It, it's the same with any agricultural industry. I read once apple orchards will have like a bumper crop one year, a couple of average crops, and then pretty much uh, sad crop production. Uh, another couple years. It averages out where they can make enough money to stay in business, hopefully more than just stay in business. Uh, but I, I look at this as a tide. You know, the money starts going out in September when I have to start ordering like perennial plugs that I can't do from seed. Um, the soil, the soil was $4,000. Propane will be around $4,000. Uh, plant starts about two thousand dollars plus all the seed that I wow. I buy and I get some specialty seeds from a place in Germany uh, because they have uniquely bred varieties that they've taken from wildflower species and they're just stunning. Well as I'm saying you take very good care of your plants. I try. Yes and and I'm sure for any like greenhouse backyard it wouldn't cost you too much and honestly it would probably save you a whole lot of time during the summer I mean, there's a huge benefit to having greenhouses, right? You know, we're warm right now. There's plenty of plants growing that I usually don't see in the ground outside right mm. now. So, I mean, very impressive. My first greenhouse uh, I built 
where I used to live in Ohio, where I, I rented a farm, um, and I found some old, uh, I think it's ABS, that black water piping, and I made little ribs with it, and it was eight feet wide and 20 feet long, covered with just regular old cheap plastic from the hardware store, and I built some benches, and I grew plants in there and was able to sell plants, um, made some money on it. I don't think I would ever get rich, but that was my first greenhouse. Wow. And it had no real heat, but in Ohio where I was, the weather wasn't quite like it is here in Vermont, and it warmed up about a month earlier than it does here. Oh, wow. So I did okay with that, but when I moved to Vermont um, and decided to do something I've wanted to do all my life, which is grow plants commercially, um, I knew I needed a commercial greenhouse. I see. So. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to kind of reach out. Having agriculture experience is very important when you're greenhouse gardening because you can't just throw plants in, water them, and then think that they're going to grow. There's a lot of work into it. How many times do you usually come down here to like water them or care for them? Um, this is the first place I come in the morning, even before I let my chickens out, <laughs> uh, to check everything because depending on how cold it is, uh, the furnace is our friend because it creates heat, but furnace air is very dry. Mm -hmm. And it blows across these plants, and I've already watered this morning. I got here bef you know, before you guys did, and uh, there were a lot of dry babies right down the middle here and up in here. So, which is okay because you want them to dry down between waterings. It helps prevent fungus problems and other issues. Especially I grow organically and once you get a problem like a fungus or some other like a root di disease like botrytis, um, it's hard to reverse organically because we don't use heavy toxic chemicals to nuke our little babies. So you're all or organic? Yes. Now yes. that's important. Not certified, but I do everything organically. It's just the, the cost and uh, the hoops you have to jump through to become certified organic. I didn't see that that would cause me to sell really any more plants. People care about the produce they're eating that's yeah. organic. They don't care about a petunia or a black-eyed Susan that's I organic. I see. So a lot of people don't really realize what they're eating for the herbs, etc., which which also yes, pesticides those are all organic. can go into. But you are all organic. No. I see that you have yarrow, which is a healing plant in most cultures. It and, is. Yes, and uh, very nice indeed. And you were describing the redness of the plant. Um, it's a newer variety, um, and it is um, a lot of yarrows that are red don't hold their red color. Mm -hmm. They tend to fade out in the sun. This is one that's been bred uh, and selected for not fading out, just like your shirt. Yes. It's going to hold that red right through the season instead of turning, uh, what is it, they turn tan or brown on you. I see. Which isn't really appealing in the garden. Understood, yeah. yeah. Uh, very much understood on that one. No one wants brown flowers in their garden. We got enough dirt. You so. mentioned herbs. Most of the herbs that we use for cooking, culinary purposes, all started out as medicinal herbs. Yeah. Even garlic. Yeah. You know, the ancient humans noticed that some of these plants had different properties that could help people uh, who were ailing or like the Native Americans, uh, they chew small willow branches because it's got the same chemical in it as aspirin does mm. um, to cure headaches. And I'm sure it's a lot more healthier than taking, you know, your usually drugs at the pharmacy. Just so. check that there's no bird poo on the branch before you <laughs> chew it. Touche, touche. That is the downside to that. So with most of these plans, um, what do you plan on doing for the next few months as we uh, go through this um, experience with you? Everything starts with a timetable. And you look at like when Mother's Day is a big holiday for mm -hmm. the, the flower industry. Yeah. Memorial Day is a big holiday for those growing you know, veggie plants and herb plants. And you work it all backwards this takes 14 weeks, this takes 12 weeks, 10, 8 weeks, 6 weeks before it's ready to be sold or should be transplanted in the ground. So that's what I look at and I use my laptop, that's my little uh, master control, and I run everything backwards. 
and see. this should be seeded at this time and you know this has got to come in at that time um, so it it's very structured and clockwork because otherwise if you start uh, tomatoes in February they're gonna be so sad and leggy and thin they're not going to do well in the garden I start mine later than most people would on their windowsill because I have the advantage of a warm bright greenhouse right the big advantages of greenhouses. it's a huge greenhouse so I only start mine about six weeks before I expect them to be transplanted out because they grow so quickly and I found if I started them earlier uh, I think April 10th is what I'm sowing this year if I start them earlier they get too tall too leggy and sad and they run out of nutrients in the pot do you repot the um with the compost that you collect uh, that i order in yeah yes yeah. so do you order locally McEnroe farm uh they're down in middleton new york and they're a huge organic farm uh right where new york mass and connecticut meet so they take in a lot of uh farm waste from other farms they take in municipal waste as long as it's clean. They take in um, vegetable matter and dry matter, uh, stuff that's thrown out at, at um, grocery stores, hospitals. You know, we throw a lot of food out in our culture, but they don't take any meat products because those don't biodegrade or compost yeah. very well. Yeah, it's, but uh, anything that's plant-based, they take. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And it's all organic, so it's... it's all organic, that's certified. That's so cool. Everyone's going green, and it's great to see in the Northeast. Does a smaller structure of a greenhouse affect um, certain plants that you would grow throughout yearly? Or can you use a small greenhouse in your backyard to grow any type of produce? Uh, you can use it. Um, for that, I would stick to the things that need extra warmth, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, eggplants. Um, you, you wouldn't want something that likes it cooler like lettuces. I now, see. early in the season, you can get a jump start with your lettuce in that greenhouse because that's going to buy you an extra month. So instead of planting your lettuce out in April, you can put it in your greenhouse late February. Oh, wow. And yeah, which is good. And you can do the reverse in the fall because that little greenhouse is gonna hold temperature, especially at night and keep the ground from getting cold, you can put in a very late crop of lettuce. And the good news with things like lettuce or spinach, they'll overwinter just fine in there and you can go out once they've thawed because they're gonna freeze solid at night. And if you cut them, then they're gonna go, they're gonna turn into mush. But if you cut them once they've thawed, when the temperature is above freezing, it's just like lettuce that you'd get you know, in June or July. Oh, wow. That's very important information, especially for anyone who's looking to put a greenhouse in their backyards. So, Mike, I, I realize that there's a lot of plants inside of the structure, and I was wondering, what are you growing in here? Right now, as far as vegetables, um, onions, uh, some hot peppers, because they need a lot of extra time compared to sweet peppers. Um, I've got a customer in Pulteney who <laughs> who ordered 2,600 uh, hot peppers. And what he does with them is he grows them and he provides them. There's a woman who does a massive amount of hot pepper jellies that she sells. And he, last year he stumbled on, or they stumbled on him, a company that does a craft spicy hot pepper Vermont beer. Ooh. So he literally needs for them, he needs three tons of hot peppers for them, two varieties. But um, last year he did about 300 pounds and they loved it. So now he needs like three tons, which means I'm gonna be growing a lot more hot peppers for him. Oh, he then yeah. plants them in the ground where he has land in Pulteney and harvests them. My job is easy, growing the seedlings. And then he takes them and my job is done. Wow. But the onions, uh, Yoder Farm in Danby and Smoky House Center, uh, between the two of them, they're doing about 30,000 onion plants. Um, those are over here, this lovely little field of green. Oh, wow. Um, and I do a lot of perennials uh, from seed, seed that I get, I think I mentioned, from Germany. And then I get what are known as starter plugs, things that can't be grown from seed because they were mutations. I see. And there are like 
huge, huge quantities of mother plants that they take cuttings from every year. And it's the same with a lot of hanging basket varieties. Those you can't do from seed because they're mutations. And like next week, I have an order coming. A lot of million bells, uh, geranium, uh, specialty types of hanging basket petunia. They don't come from seed. There are elves, for lack of a better term, who snip off little pieces and then they root them with heat uh, and some natural plant hormones. Once they get rooted and big enough, they ship them to me when I request. Again, they go backwards. I have to have my order to them by the end of September, and I tell them when I'd like them, and they work backwards to when they need to start those cuttings for me. Oh, wow. So interesting. It is. It wow. is. <laughs> so you must really enjoy what you do here. I do. It must keep you busy. Do you get Christmas off? Uh, Christmas is in the down season. Um, I start ordering, believe it or not, the commercial plant plug catalogs and perennial catalogs start coming in for me in July. Oh, Season's wow. not even over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> already... <laughs> you know, hunting for more business. Yeah. And like I said, the, I have to have the order in by the end of September for those things. Uh, not not for seeds. Uh, my perennial seeds that I ordered came in uh, first week of January, and then I sowed them the first week in February. Oh, wow. Uh, on shelving in my dining room. I have a south-facing window, plus I have LED lights. Um, and I started... Well, 12 288 trays. There's 288 little plugs in the tray. 288. Of uh, perennials. <sighs> I do that in my basement, then bring them up, put them under the light. Uh, the dining room is the warmest room in my house. Oh, so uh, your home's like a greenhouse, basically. <laughs> oh, it geez. doesn't, yeah, yeah, exactly. But once my season is over, usually right around August 1st, that's when I do a lot of my personal gardening and go camping and stuff because otherwise once it starts it doesn't stop now do you do you um cook with the herbs that you grow i do and oh, vegetables wow so that's amazing to have like you have your own produce your own you know um spices etc yep. herbs yep. it's really nice to work with this this is why a greenhouse in your backyard makes you go green because you're not you're exactly. not going to the market and buying things that get pesticides, etc. And mm. speaking of which, have you um, gone to the farmer's market at all? I sell at farmer's market. I've been selling there for 15 years, I think. Oh, wow. I used to sell produce and plants. Now I just sell plants. Um, I had to get a full-time job for health insurance. Uh, I think that was like 2005. Uh, something had to go, so it was the thing that took the most time, which is, you know, doing an acre and a half of produce. Right, true, um, true. And the plants I can do uh, on a semi-part-time basis at this time of year. Uh, once May 1st hits, though, it's a full-time job. I understand that. Um, have you ever thought about doing classes, um, having people come in and learn more about um, greenhouse gardening? Um, I have done seminars. I did them at Garden Time uh, years ago. Unfortunately, they've now closed down. Um, and I used to do them at Boardman Hill Farm stand next to the Village Snack Bar years ago. I've also done some at Grace Church. Oh, wow. So you're very active in the community of Rutland. Trying to be. Yes, it, it very much shows. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> so, Probably. Uh, yeah, so um, can you tell me more about how these plants um, need more work? Like, do you have other people that can come in and help you with all this? I mean, it seems like a whole lot to do. It is. It, it Well, it's more of a... Uh a one-man show at first. Um, I really don't let anybody else do the seeding mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I'm finicky, uh, maybe a little OCD. Uh, the ladies that help me out here sometime, uh, they used to refer to me as Farmer Monk from the OCD uh, detective show <laughs> that used to be on TV. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, no, that's too deep. No, that's too shallow, you know, type of thing. And I sift all my soil um, so I remove what I call boulders and, and, and logs, even though they're just little twigs and pebbles, but 
if you've got a you know little three eighth inch pebble sitting on top of a a seed that's like dust in some cases, some flower seeds, yeah. or even an onion seed isn't very large. Like chives, It's et not, yeah, yeah, it's not going to be able to push up over that. It's yeah. going to be like us being Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill. I'll, I'll tell you my experience of growing chives just in my window. It was such a hard thing to do because they, they couldn't get the body. Like I said, if you go to your local people and get soil from them, it's a whole lot better because yeah. not only are you supporting your community, but you're getting the finest soil that you can have for your produce and it, they'll grow better especially with the right conditions so i've had some trouble with that but my basil's doing great good yeah good. <laughs> so. i'll be starting some basil later today when you guys leave a new variety called everleaf it doesn't get tall and lanky like it is an italian genovese basil but it stays sturdier and it's not meant for harvesting you know they sell big bunches at farmers market yes. this is meant for you personally to have on your deck or patio where you're harvesting just the leaves mm -hmm. because the branch nodes are really tight together so it's not a big open plant and they're excellent in containers and stuff and, it, and it's a new variety just out this year um it's gotten rave reviews but as, as far as buying locally, tomato plants especially, people worry about late blight. Late blight doesn't overwinter here in Vermont. It's too cold. I see. That's a good thing about winter <laughs> in Vermont. But these plants that are coming up from Florida, Virginia, Georgia, wherever, late blight doesn't die out there. I see. So you risk bringing it in when you're buying southern out-of-state plants. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't mean it won't happen. If your neighbor buys an out-of-state plant from the south and you buy a local plant, um, doesn't mean that it's not going to drift across the yard or the fence to get yours. But I tend to grow varieties that are resistant to late blight. But I don't know. I'm a buy local person uh, overall. Um, if I, if I had a place I could buy everything locally to do my business, I would, but I can't buy pots or trays locally. See, I totally agree with how, how you feel about that. I mean, I feel like corporations now, the big ones, don't really care about the people and their health. They're just trying to get the products out and then get the money for them. With local, supporting your local people here, they're smaller businesses that may be struggling in the economy right now, but they are the best. Let me tell you, the quality is is amazing here in Vermont. Everyone here has something about them that seems very professional in what they're doing, especially Mike Gay. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. Well, for me, these aren't just commodities. Um, I I'm not growing 100,000 of the same exact plant that is then going to be shipped out on trucks all over New England. I'm growing just for the local economy here, uh, small scale. Um, I'm kind of a little fish, uh, bigger than some, but a lot smaller than others, uh, with my plants. And these, these are my babies. I mean, most of them I start from seed. Right. You know, and it's like giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> See, I totally agree with you, but even little fishes can change the entire base ecosystem. of a community like the yes one fish can change the entire ecosystem yep. and that's what you're doing here you're changing um how lo locally everyone buys for their produce how they grow mm. their plants and greenhouse gardening has become an important thing in vermont for going green mm -hmm. so i want to thank you mike for especially giving us this experience at greenhouse gardens we will see you next time and we will see you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.